Joining us now to discuss the crypto markets is Delphi Digital Markets Associate, Jason Pagulados. Welcome, Jason. Hey, everyone. Thanks for having me again. Glad to see you again. So we saw the GDP uh, up at 2.9%. That's 0.1% higher than expected. Uh, and that was in Q4. Bitcoin trading above 23,000. Ether, altcoins also uh, on the upswing. What's driving this rally? Is it is it are the is it still the ma is it these macro uh, 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 signals here, or are there kind of market uh, structure issues involved in terms of uh, maybe a few players uh, pushing prices around? Uh, yeah, no, it's a good question, I, and I think there it's it's probably a little bit of both, right? Um, obviously, in the wake of the FTX collapse, right, prices kind of broke down to to 15, 16 K on Bitcoin, like new lows on the year, uh, back in November. Right. And, uh, they, to put into context, right. Uh, Bitcoin was trading in this like 20 to 24 K range for eight months, roughly before that, uh, which is where Bitcoin finds itself now. So when it broke down, right, you had a bunch of people thinking, okay, it's over. Like there's going to be more contagion. FTX is going to bring down a bunch of other things, which I think is obviously like a logical th thing to think, uh, in the immediate aftermath. Uh, but what that did was it brought in a whole bunch of like uh, aggressive shorts for the first time we saw funding rates pretty uh, negative across the board, which means there's a bunch of people <clears throat> entering on the short side rather aggressively at the market while prices are really low already. So when prices uh, don't continue lower and start moving against these really aggressive new positions that are opened at the lows, right? They have to start unwinding, which is how you get these short squeezes. It's very similar to like a liquidation to the downside. It's just a liquidation of shorts to the upside. So you had that going on. Um, but you also had like an interesting dynamic when you, when you mentioned a couple big players pushing prices around, right? Something that uh, a really interesting dynamic that has unfolded over the last uh, couple of weeks, pretty much year to date, and for the majority of this price rally has been uh, the divergence between spot markets when you look at uh, Bitcoin BUSD pair, so Binance USD stablecoin, and Bitcoin USDT, so Tether stablecoin trading, right? Um, and you've seen a really large divergence to the point where USDT spot trading is actually significantly down over this time period during this rally, while BUSD spot trading has increased tremendously. And I think that's due to a number of reasons, right? FTX collapse. So where's everybody going to go trade uh, who, who like to trade derivatives and perpetual futures, right? Um, can't really go to U.S. exchanges. Dex experience, the Dex experience isn't really there yet. So the only real place you could either go is like Binance or Bybit if you want like decent volume. So that's one factor. And another factor is Binance also relatively recently announced BUSD trading would be zero fee trading, which is a great incentive to have people come trade as much as they want, right? Come DGen here, all your trades are free pretty much, right? <laughs> so yeah. So I think you have a couple of these things at play, right? You have this relief rally off the lows, plus you have this whole new dynamic going on at Binance with some absurd market share. I think it was like 80 plus percent last time I saw in terms of uh, sex market you think, share. You, so. think that's, you think that's gonna have a long-term effect on USDT uh, in general, just the popularity? I mean, FTX seems to have, uh, to have been the the place that supported it so much over the past couple of years, more so than, of course, Bitfinex itself. But it, it you know, is this sort of like the the beginning of the end for USDT as the as the uh, as the stablecoin of choice for for uh, X US uh, trading? Yeah, I mean, it. I wouldn't say it's the end, right? I think there's always going to be some some speculation everywhere even on binance with usdt trading even while they have zero fee busd trading i don't think it's the end of usd tr usdt trading at all but i do think this is like uh this is definitely like a a big shift you like you have to you have to keep an eye on on binance market share and and, and how important binance as a centralized exchange becomes and continues to get seeing as though there's literally there's nowhere mm -hmm. else to really go where the experience is uh com like comparable um, and I'm not saying Binance is a, is a great experience. I'm just saying it's one of the only, if not the only experience uh, in town after FTX, which I think is also another like, is that bullish for the industry? I'm not so sure. Let's get into the macro. So the Commerce Department is saying Thursday that the U.S. economy grew to an annual rate of 2.9% in the fourth quarter, 
what do you see, if any, impact that may have on the crypto markets? Uh, I think uh, I think at the top of the show, I think you guys kind of nailed it. I don't I don't think it really has too too much of an effect. I think more people are focused on on the commentary coming out of the upcoming FOMC meetings rather than necessarily the 50 basis point or 25 basis point rate hike, right? The market knows that the <clears throat> rate hikes are going to kind of continue, but at a slower pace until they reach whatever their terminal rate is. And <clears throat> excuse me, I think the main question is uh, that people are kind of trying to get clarity over is what they view uh, or like how long Fed Fed Chairman Powell thinks they're going to have to keep rates in restrictive territory and then what that ultimately ultimately means for things that are still showing signs of strength, like the labor market and stuff like that. An interesting thing to keep well, an eye on. We saw signs from, yeah, the Bank of Canada the other day said yeah. they were going to pause rate increases. So we'll see if the U.S. Uh, follows suit. Jason, thank you so much. That was Delphi Digital Markets Associate Jason Pagalatos.